And with that, we've got Wesley Bushard. I say that correctly? Yep. That's how we say it in the UP anyway. So Wesley's been around a little bit too, doing this and that and a number of other things. And if you want to say any of that, Wesley, you're welcome to mention it. Otherwise, you can read it in the Bible. Okay, I think I'm ready. So, today we're going to play a little game called Who Am I? I know we're here to talk about timber business management in the digital age. And we're going to talk about the software I designed, Stumpkey. We're going to cover three basic aspects of uh, managing a timber business today in, this timber, in, the, in the digital age. First, we're going to talk about managing the product. We're going to talk about tracking the money. And we're going to talk about the power of averages. But while we do that, we're going to play the game of who am I. Now, this isn't you figuring out who you are. This is me figuring out who I am, or you figuring out who I am. Uh, I got four four options up here. Am I a scholar? Am I a businessman? Am I a public speaker? Am I a tree hugger? We're going to figure that out as we go. Now, to figure that out, I'm going to tell you, Bill said I could do this. He said I could talk about myself, right? Okay, so I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. Um, recently, I got very interested in my heritage, so I started looking back at some of my family history. My story, as far back as I can track so far, Starts in 1912. This is Axel Hansen. Um, he was my mother's grandfather. He's, uh, according to what I figured out, he's the foreman of this crew. This is in Marathon County. Um, he looks kind of angry. He that or he just was a, was a, a, a ticked off guy all the time. But I wonder if not only was the foreman, maybe he was also trying to handle the business of the operation. And that's why I was ticked off, because business management is not an easy thing in the timber industry. It's difficult. And I found out that many loggers and truckers are great at running equipment and producing and hauling timber, but when it comes to being a good business manage manager or business concepts, our industry kind of lacks that, that uh, ability. So uh, Axel was my only, whoa, there we go. Axel is my only ancestor that is uh, a logger. My dad's grandfather, Frank Busher, I found this article from 1949, was a lifelong logger. Both of my grandfathers, not only were they named George, but they were both loggers at some point in time. This is my, my grandfather, Axel Hansen. Or Axel, uh, yeah, this is George Hansen. I'm getting confused. Um, I got a cheat sheet. But as I as I look at my family history a little bit, I start thinking about how how our our industry has evolved, right? How how different it is to produce timber now than it was for Axel using horses and axes and crosscut saws and how we've advanced in the in the industry and producing timber we're running millions of dollars of equipment now right but one thing that really hasn't changed so much is how we uh we manage our business a lot of guys are still using paper and pencil or they're using a calculator to have a plan and manage a business we need a good tool right one of my favorite quotes is Abraham Lincoln says, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. He understood the proper tool for the job. He understood that it would save him time in the long run by having a good tool. Stumpy, this little hard hat with glasses guy is our mascot for Stumpy. He's going to pop in and out of here uh, as we go along. His first Stumpy tip is, you don't, use a, you don't use an axe to cut down a tree, so don't use a calculator to run your business. I've always been fascinated 
with uh, computers my whole life. When I first started managing uh, a, a small logging business as a contract a hand cutter, I started using spreadsheet programs, started off using market Microsoft Works, and then I, I switched to Excel, which was great. But it still was not a purpose-built program for my business, and it always left me frustrated. I'd spend hours working on it, but I was always frustrated with it. So it got me thinking that I needed I needed a purpose-built program, and I thought other people would probably need a purpose-built program to run their business. 2012, I started talking to a friend of mine who was a software engineer, and we, we started Sunpeak, and we released our first product in 2015. We've had a lot to learn, but we are definitely uh, getting better at it. Producing or hauling timber is hard work. Keeping up with equipment, fighting the weather, and dealing with ever-changing timber markets makes for a hard job. To add to all this stress, as a business owner, it's essential to track the timber tickets that your business handles. Doing this on paper or using a spreadsheet program can be frustrating. If only there was an affordable program specifically designed for the task of managing a timber business. Well, there is. Introducing Stump Geek. Designed by a logger for any business that revolves around truckloads of timber, Stump Geek makes entering your tickets and the money associated with them fast and easy. Create job reports, statements to pay property owners or subcontractors, and invoices to get paid from mills or loggers. Plus, Stump Geek offers so much more. Download a free trial of Stump Geek on your Windows computer today. Yes, the timber industry is hard, but with Stump Geek, paperwork doesn't have to be. Well, that's great, but to start talking about practical application for a digital product like Stump Geek, we're going to start with our first, our first concept here. It's called managing the timber product. Now, we're going to go back to my story a little bit here. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of time in the woods. Now, when I, when I say I spent a lot of time in the woods, I mean more than most children. Instead of riding a school bus back and forth to school, my dad had retrofitted a school bus and we lived in it on the job for much of my childhood. And even when I got older, my dad had an old trailer house and we would pull it from job to job and we'd stay at a house on the weekend but we were out in the trailer house during the week. I was homeschooled. And so I would get done with my schoolwork early and I'd be out in the woods all day listening to my dad cut off in the distance. Um, so this is going to lead us to our first elimination on who am I. When I was 16, I was a cocky young logger, and I thought, well, um, I'm making pretty good money. I'm going to uh, quit school, much to my mother's dismay. And so it seems how the definition of a scholar is someone who's highly educated. We can get that one out of the way right away. But what, it, what happened from my upbringing is it left me with a different skill set, or sickness as I like to call it. That is, I like to bring stuff home because I was spending so much time in the woods and I like to make stuff out of it. Um, now over the years, I enjoy this so much that I've, I've kind of tried to create a side business of it. So I bring stuff home, make it, and I try to sell it. But what I found was that people are not willing to pay for my time. I'd invest a lot of time in an object and they, they, they'd want it, but they wouldn't want to pay for it. So I had a difficult time figuring out a product, right? I have a, a side business, but I have no product that can make me money. Now, in the timber industry, it's pretty easy to define our product. Our product is raw forest products, right? That's pretty easy, straightforward. But when we start talking about the UOM and volume, that's where stuff gets really tricky. In the Lake States region, we have three units of measure, right? I might send three loads of wood, and I'm going to send one, it's going to get scaled by the cord, the next one's going to get scaled by the ton, the next one's going to get scaled by the board foot. Now, I have to manage that somehow. The volume is a lot easier because it's still a truckload, right? So my volume is my truckload, but the unit of measurement is three different units of measurement. So I have to bring that together somehow. To manage my product, I have to bring that together somehow. Now, back to my story. If I can get this to work. 
This is a picture of my dad here in Minnesota. He was staying in a, in a logging camp at that time. When my dad was started logging, and all the way up to when he started teaching me to log, he always thought in cords, always talked in cords, right? Even though we started selling by the ton when he was still logging with me, we still talked in cords. How many cords did I cut last week? How many cords did I cut on this job? I still think in cords, so somehow I need to bring those units of measurement together to manage my product and, and bring it all to cords. Or maybe if somebody else thinks in tons, they need to bring it together to how many tons did I produce, right? In Stump Geek, you're going to be able to enter in one, one rate, one unit of measurement, and have it transition over to another, tra another rate or unit of measurement. So I can enter in ton, I can enter in board foot, I can enter in core, and I can see my summaries, my totals for jobs, totals per week, whatever I want to do in core. So I can start tracking my product with the digital, with, in a digital format like that. When we talk about using a digital product to manage our business, and we just talked a little bit about it, we're talking about making a list. Now all Stump Geek is is a group of different lists that are digital, that can come together, that can give us information. Um, I'm holding a list right here in my hand today. This is helping me get through this little presentation I got going on. Um, it's just my slides. Today my product is these slides. And on here's some notes that keep me, keep me going on this presentation. And I've got 49 slides, and it's pretty easy to chronologically go through this list and look at these slides, right? And to tell you what I want to tell you today. But now, let's suppose I had 300 slides, and I had a list of 300 things. And then somebody comes up to me and says, hey, how about you just show me the slides that are dealing with your family history? Well, I can start paging through this thing and try to find it, but it's going to get very cumbersome and very inconvenient. So I need a list that I can manipulate. And that's what a digital product can do for us. Also, you saw that entry field that I had there, where all the information that we would have surrounding a truckload of timber, it's gonna take a lot of time to enter that information. So in some we have it, we have the clone option. Because a lot of my loads of timber, almost all of them are very similar to the other loads I send, I need to enter them all, but they're really similar to the last load I sent. So you can clone and make an exact copy of any load, and you can start entering your information very quickly with the digital with our digital product. Also with that digital list, like I said before, if you want to manipulate it, you can start looking at it in a different way. So if I want to know how many cords of, of hardwood bolts I sent from this period to this period off this job that was shipped by this trucker, I can do that, I can filter that information down and then I can run a report on that and start looking at that information. Very quickly, I can start analyzing things in my business. Okay, so next, tracking the money. First thing we're going to talk about when track, we're talking about tracking the money. Money equals product. Now, back to my woodworking business a little bit here. I really enjoy it. I spend a lot of time doing it, probably too much time. But I never found a product. This is my house. So I, I usually just spend my time bringing it home and incorporating it in my house. But I still wouldn't mind finding a product. So I'm analyzing it, thinking, what's my product? Well, what I found out is that not only is my sickness in me, it, it's kind of contagious. And so I've had the opportunity to go to a woodworking school in Indiana and teach several classes down there, which was fairly lucrative, and it, it was really enjoyable. And then this is me uh, volunteering at a log load event. And I'll tell you what, kids love grabbing a hand tool and, and drilling a hole in a log. And so I'm starting to think, well, maybe my product in my uh, woodworking would be just education, maybe just teaching people, maybe that's my product. It's got me thinking. But I know that the time I spent in front of people there and getting ready for this presentation here today, I know one thing we can cross off, and I'm sure you guys figured this out in the first 30 seconds. 
I am definitely not a public speaker. So we got that one out of the way. So we got two left. Okay, back to product equals money. What I mean by that, I'm not saying, yeah, well, when I produce a product, I make money on it. I mean that it needs to be attached to our product. Our product needs to be attached to our money, right? We get paid by the load, and we're paying out by the load of wood. We need that on that same list. We need to make sure that it can be contained together and we can look at it together. We can't separate it. It's important that we don't separate it. So in Stumpy, you're entering your load information and your money in information and your money out information all on one container, all on one list. It's all put in together so that you can manage it and manipulate it together because it's all important. We need to understand how much money we made for our product. We also need to understand our product. It needs to be together. We can't separate it. Next, when we talk about tracking the product, or tracking the money, whoop, I was right where I was at. Tracking the money, we talk about lost revenue. Somebody says working harder is not always the answer to make more money. Sometimes you need to work smarter. Well, we personally know that. We, you know, we think about that all the time. But really, do we understand our money without a good product to manage it? Do we understand without, if we try to separate that money, are we, are we really understanding our money? So one of the ways we can work smarter is by having something to manage, manage our work, right? Another thing when I talk about lost revenue, um, you know, I've been buying and selling timber and been in the timber industry for, I don't know, 25 years. I've been buying my own and, you know, longer than that I was contracting. Um, and I've dealt with a lot of different companies, uh, from small companies to big companies. And the majority of those companies at some point made a mistake in either invoicing me or in paying me. One time I sent a trucker uh, a check for $1,800 for his couple of loads he had hauled for me. Three months later, you know, I didn't ever see that check clear. So I called him up. He's like, why? Well, you know, you owe me any money. You know, $1,800. Not a lot of money to some people, but to me it is. Uh, another time I got a check for $3,500 from a sawmill for a few, lo a couple loads that I had sent in. Three days later, I got another check for $3,500 for the same wood. Called them up. They didn't know. I could have just cashed it, but that's not what my dad taught me, how my dad taught me to be. And I'm, I'm you know, just trying to run the numbers and different things. And this is not just small companies. This is all the way, these are counties, the DNR, these are all making mistakes on their paperwork. And I think it'd probably add up to about $10,000 in my, and I'm a small timer, right? Imagine how much money is being lost out there right now in our business. So, and using that, tip, that uh, digital product to every financial transaction, we need to know, we have to have a patch in there, what is the pay status of that item? And some key, you create statements, payment statements, and you create invoices. You have three statuses. You have a no status, nothing's happened with this one. You have a yes status, yes, it's on a statement. And you have a paid status, I've marked it paid. So I create, I create invoices to people that I don't even send an invoice to. If I send one to PCA, I'm not going to send them an invoice. But I'm putting it on, a, on an invoice, and I'm going to mark it paid, so I know I got paid for that wood. Just good management. Okay, lastly, when we talk about tracking money, when we talk about what's profit. And I'll admit, I did not know what profit was for a lot of years logging as a business owner. Stumpy says, profit is not the money that a logger takes as a wage or puts away for retirement. Profit is what is left. We, I think we misunderstand that sometimes. And then we think, well, I'm making pretty good money, so I must be making profit. No, you're not. Not unless you're putting away money that the, above and beyond what you're making. The definition of profit is the money earned when a business sells products or services for more than the cost to produce them. And we just got to understand that that cost includes our wage and our retirement. Somebody said, as a logger, if you don't make a good wage, 
you own an expensive hobby, or as a woodworker, right? I have a hobby. I enjoy woodworking, but it's really not a business, and I've got to define that. Second, if you, all you make is a good wage, you own a job. My dad always owned a job. He never really owned a business. He took care of us fine, and he made you know, a decent wage, but he never really built a business. <coughs> if after all expenses and paying yourself a good wage, you see profit or money left, then you own a business. So as I, you know, my, my business has evolved a lot over the years. It changed drastically from one, one type of business to the other. I went, you know, got big. As I started really thinking about these concepts, started rolling around in my head about starting Stump Geek, I started really paying attention to the money. And I downsized my business. Now I'm not saying this is my current business. I hand cut, I hand cut for myself, and I skid my own wood. And that's the oldest piece of equipment I've ever owned. <laughs> Um, because I'm paying attention to the money. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should downsize. I'm just saying by paying attention to the, to the business that you're running, you start to make better decisions. You start to make decisions not because of the wood markets, not because of the weather, but because this is what's best for you as a business owner. Okay, the power of averages. So, Let's get the definition of an average. A number expressing the central and typical value of a set of dialogue, in particular the mode, medium, or most commonly the mean in which it's calculated by dividing the sum of values in the set by their number. Ouch. It hurts my head to read that, right? But we all know what an average is. If at lunch somebody asks me where'd you come from, I say from Tomahawk, they say, well, how long did it take you to get here? I say, well, it took me two hours. They say, well, how fast were you driving? I don't say, well, I was driving five miles an hour on my driveway and then 15 miles down the road. I say I was driving 60, 62. We know that's an average, right? We're looking for an average. Now, in the timber industry, you'll meet a lot of people that know their average production. Sometimes it's slightly inflated, I found. And it, tend, <laughs> it tends to be because that's the way our brain works, right? Well, in a digital product on something, Right on the dashboard, you have your production, weekly production, and your average. It's really hard to inflate it when you look at that every time you open your business program and you say, oh, this is my average, right? But even more important than the production average is the money average. We need to know our average. We need to know our average cost. We need to know our average money in and what we're netting, right? And some people, you can enter, when you create a job, you can actually enter your estimated volumes, your estimated costs, your estimated money in, and it'll give you your estimated average. Then as well, you're cut, while you're cutting the timber sale, you can see the actual numbers right beside that. When you're done with it, you can say, hey, how far was I off? Where's my average? And then you can start thinking, my average production versus my average uh, money, how does that work out? So that brings us to the end of the uh, timber business management in the digital age, managing a product, tracking the money, power of averages. We still need to finish the other four, right? Bill's over there giving me the five minute signal and I can't get this stupid thing to switch. Oh, six minutes, awesome, that's all I need. So to finish off our little game of who am I? This was a bad day in the woods for me. <laughs> and up at the top it says, my dad taught me how to laugh when things were bad. My dad, this is a picture of my dad here, and he's laughing. He's not laughing at the situation. He's trying to defuse a very stressful situation for me at the time. Very important picture to me. Uh, my dad died six months after this picture was taken. It's the last picture taken of him. Or, well, there was a couple pictures that day, but um, I value what my dad taught me. He taught me how to work hard. He taught me how to, you know, relax, take things, you know, and strive. But my dad never taught me how to be a businessman because he couldn't. He didn't know. You know, he didn't know how to teach me that because he didn't know it himself. So I am definitely not a businessman. So what does that lead? <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys, you might have shown me up if I told you that to begin with. I'm a tree owner. No, a self-educated, good person. 
I am a tree hugger. I don't mind being called a tree hugger. No, I said self <laughs> Four years of my family, or four generations of my family, on both sides, my mom and dad have been supported by the timber industry. Every time I cut down a tree, I feel like I'm contributing to sustainable forestry. It makes me feel proud. And I love trees so much, I put them in my house, right? So I am truly a tree hugger, and I don't mind being called that. In fact, I like it so much, I wrote an article called I'm a Tree Hugger, and I put it in my local paper, and it was in a couple of my local papers, trying to change some of the persona that is around logging and, and the, you know, how people view us. But I do strive to be a businessman. So I would be remiss if I didn't leave you with a little bit of a, of a sales pitch today. So that's what I'll do now, hopefully if it works. all the time, Wes the Busher, how do you keep that amazing physique? How do you stay in shape? Well, I go to Stumpy's gym. Uh, Stumpy's gym is perfect for burning calories and working on your lower and upper body. First of all, you get to and it keeps you stuck so that when you step, you go right up to where you almost touch the ground, but not quite. <laughs> Then you make sure that the snow is soft on top and soft underneath. Right in the middle, there's a hard layer that just won't quite hold you up. So you step, and boom, all of you go all the way down. <laughs> you want to work on lower body more. Use your legs, try to keep the trees up. But if you want to work on upper body, we give you a shovel. <laughs> That's how you're getting the trees out, because we got to get to the bottom of the trees. Now you might ask, what's so special about Stumpy's Gym? Well, first of all, we keep it a cool 10 degrees, 5 degrees, sometimes zero, sometimes below zero, with a wind chill of 25, 30 below. So, if you sit down, you're going to freeze to death. Now, I know that you sit down. Get up to your arm. Yeah, it's nice. When's the last time you're at the gym and your phone started going off? You thought, well, heck, I gotta answer my phone. So you stop working out. Now at Stumpy's Gym. Stumpy's Gym, we don't have any cell service. So <laughs> see that. Stumpy's Gym is okay. Conveniently, in the middle of nowhere, right across the Timbuktu town. I know what you're gonna ask next. You're gonna say, hey, Wes, if I come to Stumpy's Gym, can I cut a tree down? <laughs> No, of course not, crazy. <laughs> Our insurance would never allow that. But we'll let you carry the saw and we'll let you go vroom, vroom, vroom. You can act like a real logger. <laughs> now, all you gotta do is call 1 844 Stumpy. Get your membership. Stumpy Gym does not exist. 8444 Stumpy is the number for Stumpy, a software for loggers and truckers. Stumpy can't help you keep in shape, but can help manage your timber business. <laughs> Thank you for your time.